How much? Two probably. Oh look, it's just take a five, alright? Put that on my desk for me, please. Sorry. Good afternoon, George. Oh, yeah, sorry, Sarge, the, uh, the car had a flat. Really? Well, you picked a good day for it. Mr Munro is on the war path. What do you mean? He's looking for you and he is not giving out awards. <sighs> good night last night, George. <sighs> flat tire, eh? Yes, sir. Last week it was the starter motor, wasn't it? Uh, it was, sir, yeah. Well, it's not generally a good idea to stay later to Friday night stag do when you've got early turn the following morning. Hey? I'll let the tardiness go for the moment, Georgia. Can we talk about your attitude? Sir? I've had a complaint from a motorist. He phoned in yesterday to say that PC218 had been downright rude and insulting. Are you remembering them? Yes, sir. He was lying. He said he hadn't been drinking when he had even though he was under, so... So, because he lied, your attitude was justified, was it? Well, he was being stroppy, sir. I don't care. It's your manner we're talking about. When it comes to dealing with members of the public, I want to see an improvement. It's a question of the right attitude, George. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And before you go anywhere, get a shave. Oh, there you are. I'll be looking all over. Didn't know you cared. Ow! Cut yourself. What do you think? How's the head? What? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you said you had a flat. Bit difficult with your car in for a service. Yeah, Sergeant Clark won't know that. Well, he does now. How come? It happened to be mentioned on parade. By who? Guess. Reg. Well, don't tell him what I told you. Oh, throttle him. Uh, Mr. Munright doesn't know that, does he? Well, he will unless he's deaf. He came in looking for you at precisely that moment. It's going to be one of those days, I can tell. Well, don't take it out on me today just because you've got a hangover. Sir? Sir? Right, Mrs. Butler. You jumped a red light, your tax disc is out of date and you've got a bull tyre. Now, you do realise bull tyres can be dangerous. Not to mention illegal. Yeah, but it's not our intention to ruin anybody's day, Mrs Butler. Not at all. And since we at Sunhill aim to please, we're not going to take any action, just as long as you tax your car and you get that tyre replaced. So, thank you very much and you have a nice day now. You forgot to say, missing you already. Yeah, well, it's all a question of winning the public's confidence, Dave. Oh, yeah? Oh, 914 November, Whiskey November. Get away! Oh. That looked like Nick Castle in that car. Who? Nick Castle, the scroll on it for going to quit. All units, Sierra Oscar from 218. Go ahead. Jamaica Lane heading towards Hoxton Road. Attention requested to a red saloon index Echo 914, November, Whiskey November. Concerned in a failing to stop. Receive. Castle. Isn't he the one who got off, got off after cleaning and stitched him up? Yeah, that's the one. Are you sure it was him? Yes. Come on, put your foot down, will you? 218 from 358 receiving. Yeah, go ahead, Gary. Uh, can you confirm that index number as Echo 914, November, Whiskey November? Yeah, that's correct. We're attending a burglary at Maydale Street. The witness has just given that index at the scene. Burglary. It's got to be Nick Castle. Are you 
sure you just don't want it to be Nick Castle? What are you suggesting? <sighs> Sorry, George. I've got going too fast for you. Now in the alley on Loftus Street. Blurred vision from last night's drinking. Is the woman hurt? That's a bit shaken. George took a bit of a tumble. I told him to come in and get checked out by the FME. He wasn't being bloody minded, I hope. The people he was chasing were suspects, were they? Burglary, failing to stop. Dave Quinnan found three VCRs and a variety of silverware in the boot of the car. Uh. And there is one other thing. The woman with the pensioner? Nina James. Yeah, Hugh James's wife. Oh, great. According to Dave, she's threatened all kinds of retribution on George in the most colourful of language. It's not half past seven yet. It's just down there. I park in the same place every day. Everything's all right, isn't it? It's gone. I don't believe it. When did you last see your car, Mr Walsh? Last night, about 11.15. It was there when I came back from the pub. It's been nicked, hasn't it? Well, unless you lent it to someone. No. Your car was recovered in Loftus Road. You want me to come and collect it, I suppose? No, uh, it's got to be checked out first. We believe it may have been involved in a series of burglaries. Blimey. Thanks for your help, love. You should have got a sick note. Then you could have gone to bed to recover. Recover from what? Uh, George thinks you might be coming down with a virus, sir. Virus? <laughs> Strange term for it. I've just had a very angry phone call from a Mrs James. Oh, don't tell me, sir. She wants to make a complaint. What did the FME say? Oh, well, thank you for your concerns, sir. Bruised knee, nothing broken. Well, the DSC is checking out the stolen car for prints now. Do we have a detailed description of the suspects? Yes, Not sir. Really. Do we or don't we? Yes, sir. It was Nick Castle. We both saw him. George, Nick Castle got off on a technicality. The defence insinuated I lied, sir. Yes, life's unfair sometimes, but holding a grudge because it's you It's not a grudge, sir. Castle's a burglar, we know that. And it was him in that car. Dave? Yeah, yeah, it's possible. I mean, I don't know him as well as George. No doubt about it, sir. Well, hopefully he's left his prints. Meanwhile, if you're so sure, check him out. It'd be good if we had something to show for this latest fiasco. Get a move on. Yeah, all right, all right. What's the hurry? Why don't you just have a hair of the dog and be done with it? What's the problem? Castle's not going anywhere, is it? Well, we're not going to Castle's. We've been called to a domestic. Terrific. Personally speaking, I'd be more than happy not to get involved in your petty dispute. It's Castle. I saw him. That's the trouble when people have got hangovers. They get irritable. They don't ever go This is all I need. What do you want now, you... I suppose she sent you, did she? She? Our interfering neighbour! Well, we've had a report of a disturbance, sir. You can go on. Peter Fisher, it's my wife, Shirley, my daughter, Zoe. Everything OK, Mrs Fisher? Yeah, it's a family row, that's all. No, everything is not OK. Dad, just leave it! Why don't you tell them what you just told your mother and me? Well, he went mad because I stayed out all night at some blokes. And then when I told him who it was, he went ballistic. Oh, yeah. Now tell them why you stayed out all night when you know you're not supposed to. She was being held somewhere against her will. It's not enough that she's been having an affair with a school teacher. Ex-school teacher, actually. You started it when you were at school. But last night he forced her to stay with him. Is this true? Yeah, but he didn't do anything. How old are you, Zoe? Seventeen. Do you want to make a complaint? No. You've got to! I don't want to! Do you mind? Not shouting. Please. Bob didn't do anything. I got this when I smacked my head into the door. I tried to leave and he tried to stop me. I only went round there to tell him I didn't want to see him anymore and he got upset. His name's Bob Simmons. He lives at number 20 Fawcett Gardens. Now, what are you going to do about it? If Zoe doesn't want to press charges, Mr Fisher, then it's not a police matter. Oh, so you're not going to do anything about it?
That looks like a man with a purpose. Maybe we should warn him off. Warn him off what? Teacher bashing. Look, Dave, let's just concentrate on crimes that have already been committed, yeah? Come on. I want to check out Nick Castle. Well, if there's a murder at 20 Fawcett Gardens, it's down to you. Castle's got an alibi. We're out of here, George. What do you want? What do I want? I want to know where you were between seven and eight this morning. Here. Prove it, can you? Joe! Where was I between seven and eight this morning, mate? Here. We've been playing poker all night. Can we wait the others? No, you're all right. Look, we just got to sleep. You woke us up. I got four blokes out the back. We'll say where I was. You satisfied? No, oh, you're lying to me, Castle. All right, thank you, Mr. Castle. Come on, George. Come on. Come on. See ya. You've just got a downer on me because the court believed me and not you. Isn't that right, up along? <laughs> sure. Sure. It's all right, Dave. Oh, what's the matter? Met so hard up they can't afford to pay anyone but cripples now. I'm going to wait you, Castle. Come on. That is it. You're nicked. Yeah? What for? Assault. George. Dave, he hit me. Hit me in the chest, didn't you, hey? Yeah, it's smooth. Solicitor is threatening to sue for wrongful arrest. He says there were four witnesses in Castle's flat who will swear that Castle never touched you. They weren't there, sir. Three of them were in bed, and the other one had gone back to the living room by the time he assaulted me, sir. Dave? Well, I was outside, I didn't see anything. There are five people contradicting your version of events. There were no witnesses. They're lying. Oh, are they, George? So, your car had a puncture this morning. I heard your car is actually in the garage. You overslept. Then you get a bollocking from me, so you go out onto the streets to see who you can pick on. You've got a thing about Castle. He's got an alibi. You've got no evidence, and you still arrest him. How stupid can you get? The fingerprints will be in the car, sir. They won't. DSC has drawn a blank. Well, there's still the assault on the police officer, sir. You must be joking. Well, goodbye, Mr. Castle. Thanks for being so understanding. Yeah, ta -da. Thank you. George? Come in. You ought to be more grateful. Stand to him, I'm not suing for wrongful arrest. Yeah, yeah. Mind you, I wouldn't have dropped it if you'd have kept me here any longer. I got a training class at one. Perhaps you should take up some physical discipline. I'm only saying. You know, then you wouldn't be so prone to injury. See you later, Hopalong. I do hope so. Show him out, will you, Mick? No problem, George. Come. Ah! You'll be pleased to know we've got a complaint to investigate. Ecstatic. From a one Bob Simmons of 20 Fawcett Gardens, who claims a certain Peter Fisher has been threatening him. Oh, right, so it's uh, not a murder investigation then, Dave? No, but if we'd have had a word with Fisher earlier, we could have nipped it in a bud. Instead, you've been so single-minded about Castle, we end up with Monroe on our back. Look, I don't want to know. I just want to go home to bed, OK? <sighs> Fisher kept banging on the door and shouting. I wasn't going to open it. He said if he saw me in the streets, he'd beat the living daylights out of me. Zoe said you kept her here last night against their will. Well, that's what Fisher kept on shouting, but it's rubbish. What, Zoe wasn't here? I, I haven't seen Zoe for weeks. Well, why would she say she was here if she wasn't? I was a teacher. Perhaps she's got a grudge. She told us that you were having an affair, and it started while she was at school. It's ridiculous. But she also told us that you kept her here last night because she broke off the relationship. She broke it off? She was 16. It wasn't illegal. <laughs> you're having an affair with one of your pupils and all you're worried about is whether it's illegal or not. Zoe's not some innocent, you know. Oh, so that's all right then, is it? Her dad's a bit of a tyrant. Zoe used to come to me for advice. She needed someone she could talk to. Occasionally, I'd invite her back to my place. One thing led to another. I'm not proud of it. How long did this relationship last? Until recently, on and off. So you're saying that Zoe was not here last night? No, right? she wasn't. She's not going to press charges, is she? Not yet, she's not. Because she won't be able to make them stick. I'm the one who's making a complaint here. 
But I told you, I didn't want to do anything about it. What am I supposed to do? He's just going to get away with it. But Mr Simmons denies Zoe was there last night, Mr Fisher. Yeah. Oh, he would, wouldn't he? It's his word against mine. And he is, after all, a respectable school teacher. Is that why you didn't want to make a complaint? Because you can't prove anything? Well, yeah. Well, there may well have been a witness in the vicinity who saw you there last night. It's not worth the hassle. Look, um... Mr Simmons also indicated to us that it was him who ended the relationship. Oh, typical. Bob Simmons is a sad old man. Well, when I told him I didn't want to see him anymore, he burst into tears and begged me to stay. And when I said I wanted to leave, he wouldn't let me. Look, he didn't do anything to me. I fell asleep on his sofa. Then this morning, I suppose he saw sense and let me go. Well, there's no harm done, so there's no point going on with it, is there? Well, what's that on your face if there's no harm done? It was an accident. Look, if you don't make a complaint, he's not going to think twice about getting involved with other pupils, is he? Leave it, Dad. I just want to forget it. I'm not going to go on about it. Look, Mr Fisher, I strongly advise that you stay away from Mr Simmons. Do you want to make myself clear? I don't want to... Yeah, go ahead, Sarge. Free to speak? Yes, Sarge. Have you got a couple of minutes? Mr. Brown, I would like to see you back in the station ASAP. Come. George. You met Mrs. James earlier? Yes, sir. Not the most auspicious of occasions? No, sir. Anyway, Mrs. James would like a word with you. I did say that I was sorry, sir. Yes, George, quite. Excuse me? Mrs. James realises you were only doing your job. Her husband, after all, is on the uh, police consultative committee. I came in to apologise, Constable. I was a bit rude at the time. Well, very rude, in fact. I was worried about my aunt. She's just had a hip replacement, which has gone wrong. I was shocked and terrified about what could have happened. But I shouldn't have taken it out on you. It's all right. I think you were probably a bit lucky, Constable. Those invalid carriages could pretty hefty things. Yeah. Uh, the two that we were chasing, did you get a good look at them, Mrs. James? One of them was white, about five foot eight, with dark hair. I didn't really see. It was all so quick. There was one wearing a grey fleecy hat and looked very young. Can you describe him? I'm not sure it was a him. It looked like a girl to me. All right, thanks for your help, Mrs. James. OK, bye. Look after that knee. Yeah. George. This is Mr. Walsh. He's come to collect his car. You know, the one you brought in after you had the bang with the old lady? Yeah, all right, Reg. <clears throat> right, Mr. Walsh, uh, your car is just in the uh, station yard around the corner. Give me a minute and I'll be with you. That's right. Wait. Put yourself into a funeral, Directors, Reg. At the end of the shift, I'm going to practice ritual disembowelment on you. Me? What have I done? Uh, Reg, he thinks you dropped a minute when Monroe walked in on parade. How do you mean? His car being serviced? Why does he think it was me? Hello, Mrs Fisher. What are you doing here? My dad had his car nicked sometime last night. Your lot brought it back here, so I gave him a lift. Is it fit to drive? Yeah, no problem. Well, I'll be off then, Dad. It's been one of them days. Yeah, tell me about it. The damage could have been worse. But is it safe? Yeah. And I'm giving my granddaughter driving lessons. Not that her father knows, he'd go berserk. Does your granddaughter have access to this car, Mr Walsh? Zoe? What do you mean? All right, Gary. <laughs> you were short of a few bob, are you, Dave? Well, yeah, you could say that. Fancy a wager, then? Such as? Well, I'll bet you a score I can have Castle nicked and charged before the end of the shift. <laughs> the alcohol's damaged your brain, George. He's got four alibis and one row will kill you if you go anywhere near him. Yeah. School, then. Make it a tenner. All right. You coming? Zoe's not here. Anyway, she said she didn't want to take it any further. Uh, we're investigating another matter, Mrs Fisher. Uh, do you know where she is? She's gone to Canley Sports Centre. She's meeting someone there. Why, what's happened now? Uh, it's nothing to worry about. Thanks for your help, Mrs Fisher. Uh, yeah, thanks. Hang on, George. Is that it? I mean, what's this got to do with Castle? Oh, it's uh, five to one. Do you want to call for some backup, Dave? 
What's happened, George? You gone clairvoyant all of a sudden? Hello, sorry. <laughs> Which one is it, George? Nick! Get out of here! Come on. Right, you go through the hall. I'll cover the back. You're going somewhere, Castle. Go on, try it. Go on! You know something, Dave? First time of the day, I'm beginning to feel human. Get out of it. Look, Zoe, we got a witness who saw you running away from the car, and if you've touched any of that stolen property, your fingerprints will be on it. Well, I only touched recorders in the boot of the car to stop them rattling about. I didn't go into any of the houses. I just drove the car. Nick did the burglaries. Why did you tell your dad you were with Simmers? Well, I had to tell him something. He usually visits my granny in Hastings Friday nights. He comes back Saturdays, but he come back early. I'd been out all night. Goes crazy if I do that. Could have said I was at girlfriends. But why not drop Simmons in it? He deserved it. Oh, very nice. When I was at school and I was getting grief off my old man, he used to come on all sympathetic. I thought he really cared about me. And then he tells me he doesn't want to see me anymore. He can't get rid of me just like that and get away with it. Yeah, well, he's going to give you even more grief now, isn't he? Knowing you're involved in burglaries. I just won't go home. I'll stay at Nick's. Nick's very likely to go to prison. My granddad's then. Well, after pinching his car. I didn't pinch his car. I just borrowed it. I had a spare set of keys. All right. How many burglaries did you and Nick do all together, Zoe? Six. Three to Friday night before last, and three last night. Nice one, Zoe. George! Sarge? We just had a call from your garage. They want to know when you're going to pick up your car after it's been serviced. All right, Sarge. I should get a flat tire if it's going to help me clear up six burglaries. Uh, I've cleared up six burglaries because I stuck to my guns when everybody else was being bloody minded. Now, if it had been down to Mr Munro, he'd have put Nick Castle up for a civic... civic award. Yeah, it's all right, George. You got a good result. It doesn't change anything I said this morning. No, sir. Oi! Tenor. Oh, you have to wait till we get down to the pub. I haven't got any change. Oh, no way am I going to the pub. Well, you'll have to wait, then. I've only got a 20. Look. See? Oh, what's that? Your winnings from betting on, Jules? Betting on what? Oh, you know. Just that you blame your car for being late this morning. I'm telling you, the only shame was Monroe walking him when he was in the middle of telling us all about it. Uh, see ya. <laughs> Don't suppose I could buy you a drink, George? The way you're feeling? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can actually, Dave. One's a point. <laughs>